Hello and welcome to Anton's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury. He's Oz. <gasps> this is a brand spanking new Nord Stage 4. And it's the end of the day here of a Friday of filming videos. And uh, I failed at a few. And I thought, what could I do a video on? Thank you for anyone who watched the other videos I've done on Hammond organ, often aimed right at the beginners. And this one, it was inspired by a good friend of mine called Paddy Blight, who's a wicked bass player and who's going to be in the following video. Uh, someone found a video that he'd put up of a solo that I'm playing with like one of my childhood heroes, a guy called Andy Timmons. If you don't know, you've got to check this guy out. Um, real privilege to play with him. And that pedal show. It was a That Pedal Show band gig. Anyway, let's watch the video. And I'll, I reckon that just by analysing it, you'll find out some things, some little hacks about soloing, especially over a band. Uh, and we'll try, we we'll push for time, so we're just going to get along and do this and we'll break down the sound and techniques and such. So let's start from the beginning, here we go. Well first things first, you can see that I'm getting ready for it. <laughs> so I've decided in that little gap, I'm fiddling with the knobs on there, so let's check that out. Yeah, I reset my draw bars. Trick number one. So I've got a little gap and I want to come in and you hear me and you can see me holding the draw bars and I've got a fistful of them and I go. But it sounds a bit more distorted, so I'll put a bit of distortion on here. There's definitely some reverb on there, a bit more. Got the new spring reverb in here in the North Stage 4. <laughs> and I reckon there's a bit of delay. I can see myself fiddling with that. So let's tap that. A little bit of delay. Yeah, a bit dirty. I've got a dirty sound there. And that whole idea is to make an entrance, right? So I'm flamming into the note and one thing you find is I'm playing in I reckon let's hear I'm in I'm in the wrong key and here's a uh, tip number one that song is in B and I don't like soloing in B so I cheated and I transposed the keyboard because I love shredding in C so uh, I'm being an open book here and I think a lot of people fear because sometimes you just Unlike guitar, where you can pretty much play most licks in every key, uh, unless they're using open strings, on piano, physically, you can't play certain licks. So at that time, I must have gone, hang on, I want, that's probably what I was doing there, was transposing to put it in the key I wanted to play in, which I want to play licks in C. So I've transposed it down the semitone, and I'm grabbing the draw bars. Yeah, in that range. Cool. So that's trick number one. Transpose, set up to win, a bit more excitement in the sound, more dry than you think you need. And uh, if you, uh, it's because it's a bit rocky as well, I felt the delay fit, so let's keep going. Cool. Right. I know what I'm thinking there. I'm thinking one note solo. <laughs> Basically, that's, it's kind of a joke, right? So I hit that first note. But to keep interest, I'm pinning it with my pinky. And I'm just flamming the seven, or the B flat in this case. And I think that's me, I've, this is the second night I've ever played it, so I think I'm just trying to get myself into it. And uh, one thing with organ and keyboard instruments is often we lack sustain. And I think a lot of people, when you start solos, they start hot like and they got nowhere to go. And I think I, you could hear that, I'm building it up, and then what I do is I rise up through the scale. That gives me tension, right? And then the band are awesome because they're here, 
That's the beautiful thing of playing live music. They've obviously heard that, and then there's this release. So let's see if I can play along to it. And I jump in. Really, I mean, that's bold. And then I'm flicking the C underneath it. Up to the minor third. Fourth. And the band just do, uh, I go. Which is C, E flat, F. And this is one thing that you see, um, a lot of what I think of as flamming. So I'm, now I'm playing, I'm soloing, I'm just thinking of five notes. I'm thinking of the pentatonic scale now, because I'm, I'm trying to keep up with a guitar player. So I'm thinking pentatonic, right? C, E flat, F, G, B flat, C again. They're the notes, but I'm thinking. So if you've not done that before, try. Walk into the note, and that first lick I come in, and it's like um, guitarists do hammer ons, yeah, yeah. hammer ons and pull offs. And I think you'll see with my hand, I go, Oh, let's see what I do. Another little bit there, I go, So I'm trying to create excitement, so I'm. Do, 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 do. And this I've spoke about before, it's one of the big hacks in organ playing, even with a weighted keyboard. Get your palm of your hand, and if you ever want to generate excitement, guitarists do it all the time when they're going to drop into the riff, they go and on organ we can do it. And I do that all the time out of habit. Hey, you see me doing it, every gap. I'm repeating myself, I'm not gonna, because this feels very vain, but the bits to steal from it are, watch how much I'm just hitting stuff in my left hand to try give it some juice. Like Steve Ray Vaughan, that's why I used to be a massive Steve Ray Vaughan, I still am. And I realized all the noise when he's changing pickups, that's what's exciting. If you're just there, if I went, Boring. I'm just hitting that whenever I want, so let's keep going. Right, one of my favorite licks ever. So we got that pentatonic scale. And then I'm thinking, right, um, Andy's a bit jazzy. Uh, this is about as jazzy as I get. And uh, we want to like, mo if you don't know, we've got that pentatonic and what makes it different to the blue scale is it was just this use of the F sharp in there or the flat five. And there you can like, hear me go. And it gives, it's like pseudo jazzy stuff. So apart from the notes, what I'm thinking there is shred. So I, I'm like, I want to put inject a bit of speed. I've done a bit of jazziness, built a bit of tension. Um, so I'm then I'm thinking Eric Johnson, which is uh, legato. So I smooth it out instead of. I smooth out my plan. And these are groups of four or... And I do it all with my free fingers. So let's have a listen. I'll see if I break down what exactly I'm doing. Okay. 
all with my three fingers. And again, I'm pushing up. So if you want to try this lick out, instead of just going, go push up from the B flat to the C. And a lot of it is just random. Again, one thing I learned when I was younger, I used to sit down and learn the licks. I'm like, it would be boring if I played the lick the same every time. So this is why it's simple as thinking, hey, get these three strong fingers. I'm not doing nothing with these. All with this. All three fingers. And like that bit where I took off, that's just setting my fit there. I'm using four fingers, one, two, three, four. Actually, I rotate. Anyway, shred. Uh, and you'll notice that these are strong. Try to do anything fast with those four. I can't do it. Okay, I'm shredding. Big in the gap. I'm after that lick because I'm going to go somewhere and I've gone to one of my stock licks and I'll teach it to you now. Which I'm thinking like Albert Lee. Which is. Okay, which is. Start with your thumb on the G. And then I'm getting this little pivot here. So I've got this Jeremy pivot. These, it's, I'm thinking it like little claws, right? So, um, and I figured that out from Jules Holland because I see him just move his hand like that and rob him forward. So I've got my index finger on F sharp, middle finger on B flat, fourth finger on C, and they're kind of all hanging out there. And then I've got my thumb and everything's gonna pivot. So let's just start with these two, with these, uh, ignore this C, and just get, so we go G, F sharp, G, B flat, G, F sharp, B flat, G. And it's about thinking, like getting it, getting your wrist up, and thinking like, and it's the timing people will remember, they don't care about the notes, it's about being in time. And then I'm obviously feeling a bit caffeinated there. And uh, I've gone, oh, uh, I'm gonna mix it up between these two, but it's really an easy switch, because I go. And it's a bit random, you know. You can just shred that and claw it out, but that's the hand position. Hopefully that's it, and have fun with that. I mean, you can hit the whole thing together or any combination. Shred. Okay, again, jazz. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's the note. Yeah, nothing's more jazz than taking the note you're in and then playing the one directly next to it. And that's what I'm thinking there. I'm thinking, right, again. These, these people here are gonna know I know jazz. And there's nothing more offensive than saying, I'm in what key? And then playing the semitone out, right? <laughs> so all I've done is I've gone, and jazz to me, when I'm straight, especially, you know, this is all staying in one chord. I'm soloing over one chord. So I'm using these changes of mindset to create the changes in my playing instead of the chords. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? And that's what I'm, uh, yeah, I know what I'm thinking there. So I've hit that semitone out. If this is, I'm thinking, again, I know we're transposed, but we've got C, E flat, F, F sharp we've been using, G, B flat, and C. They're all the notes we've been using so far. In that build up, we used that nine, but they're all the ones, and now I'm thinking, right, I'm gonna throw us into another world. Go in a semitone out, but I'm gonna play the diminished scale because if I play the diminished scale, then I can move it in minor thirds because it's symmetrical, right? So, 
and I figured that out one day. I was like, listen to these guys, like, what are they doing here? And I he used to hear them say the half whole scale. But basically there I'm going, choose an offensive note, and then I know below it, this is the diminished scale. And I'm just choosing intervals. But I'm doing it in time and it sounds violent. Shredding. Yeah. I think that's what I'm doing. Uh, so it's as simple as that. Sometimes I think people will go, yeah, you know, what I'm doing is like, um, you stolen this lick from Charlie Parker, not me. I'm just playing fricking diminished scale, a semitone out to be offensive. Also, uh, yeah, that's a really nice lick to do. Because I'm thinking, oh, this is minory mentality. Uh, one of the nice voices to do, uh, and you would do, I think I'd do it, I reckon I'll do it when I play rhythm. I'll play rhythm in a minute. But a uh, way to voice a minor chord, instead of playing C minor seven like that, I would play it without the C, put my thumb on the B flat, index finger on the E flat, and I use my middle finger again, because I use all these three fingers all the time, because they're strong, right? And all I'm doing is playing in that chord, and then I'm thinking F, which is thumb C, index F, and I'm using my fourth finger here. And it's got that old school, like, it just sounds old school. And it, uh, I think, because I've done so much single note stuff, it's a way to be like, oh, I know a few more notes than one thing, but anyway. Diminished. Okay, there's a, I, I, you know, out of everything I've done, that's probably the bit, if I had any form of pride, I like it when I do that, when I've put the brakes on it, I'm just thinking rhythmically. Um, and let's just hear that again. Listen after the, and then I'm just thinking, I wanna pull everyone back because I can sense we're getting to the end of the solo. Yeah. And I've done that by playing staccato. So that first shredding line, they're all joined together, you know, like legato guitar playing. And then that last one, I'm, I'm literally doing stabby things and trying to be like I'm just trying to pull the brakes on it uh, because I think Andy steams in. Cool, and then we're into that solo and notice that one of my pet hates and I implore you to think about it, you can almost do anything you want in the middle of a solo if you get into it well and you get out of it well. And I see, I've done a million jam nights, I'm sure you have too, but many people don't realize that the key moments are when you come in and when you get out of the solo. And no one likes a dude ending a solo when they didn't think it was gonna end. And you see that time and time again. And if that's you, you probably know it. Like sometimes when you get to the end of a solo and you look up and everyone's looking at you like, and you can feel the energy's gone. It's best to, so before that, I'm queuing, I'm looking around like we're gonna end this, because this wasn't planned. And, uh, and then I hold a note, which means the band have time to negotiate the transition. Check this out. Walking up. So, yeah. And then, and he's in, solo in. And I'm just holding that note. Still holding one note.
Right, let's break that down because there's a little bit of uh, street wisdom in there, maybe <laughs> from me doing a million gigs, which is I've got uh, on the Nord now I can just bring up uh, electric bin. There's that lit we were doing before. And I, let's split the keyboard. I can tap that. I've got a little split there. And we will put this in the left hand. Put the organ in the right zone. Cool, and you hear I've got I've got two keyboards there. This is where the North Stage 4 is amazing. I've got an Electro 5D and a uh, Stage 3 there, but I reckon I could do, have done the whole gig on this with the new capabilities of having everything all on one layer. It's pretty dope. Uh, here we go. This is a really handy voicing. Again, I said that that's a way to play C minor, seven. Another way to do it is to, in your left hand, have the same shape, so pinky B flat, index finger E flat, G on the thumb, but then put your middle finger on that D and you get that jazzy nine sound. But you've left out the bass note because I've got a dope bass player, Paddy, playing the bass, so I'm not playing it. And you hear me go. That's what I'm doing in the left hand whilst holding one note. So the whole thing would go. And I might work the rotary. And listen to it, I'm playing freaking gibberish to just build tension. And then all I've got to hit is this big A flat, but I, all that gibberish is like, what? And if I tried to break it down, I can't break it down because I'm just deliberately playing wrong stuff. But it sounds so exciting, right? Big. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, that solo is on there, Paddy Blight, uh, and obviously Andy's is amazing, but Key takeaways from that, if I go back to just this organ sound, are uh, transpose it into a key you're comfortable playing in just for the solo. Again, like if I wanted to go back to and I wanted to learn the record, I could flick out of that transpose setting. A lot of keyboards can do that. That made it, made it in an easier key for me. And then thinking about, especially uh, soloing over one chord like that, is changing your mindset and reaching on these kind of bags of tricks. One being building tension with long notes. I mean, that's it's countdown. I mean, it's, it's using really basic techniques, but again, I'm like, people are like, oh, shit. and I, you can feel that you're gaining people's attention. And then when you come out, And again, these, instead of so much more when you use your left hand and trust me, get used to using your palm, this is a weighted keyboard and it's still not the end of the world. Um, like it's not the most comfortable thing, but hey, if you cut yourself, uh, you don't look cool actually. You just need to use a lot of cleaning products. Uh, shredding, think about the difference between, are you legato shredding or, are you staccato shredding? Uh, and then having a few stock shred licks, like... Or another one would be... Um, I do that a lot. 
you know, I'm using uh, gravity to make me sound faster than I really am. And hopefully I broke that down enough for you. Uh, when you're playing out, really play out. I think some guys, especially with no chords to play through, just choose the semitone out and play the diminished skip. In time, uh, root, um, voicings, using that nine. When we got there, there's loads of things, hopefully you can nick, I'll leave that there. Thanks so much for watching, thanks also for sitting here and doing that. Um, I love teaching um, people and showing people that it's really not rocket science, this stuff, and how, uh, you know, for goodness sake, I get to play with Andy Timmons with that limited type of thinking. But the limitations I have in there, I think sometimes I'm lucky that I never learnt too much, otherwise I'd probably have a bit more humility and stay indoors. Uh, but check out the other videos we've done on North Stage 4. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon on Anderton's TV.